first thing, um, make sure that you remember hip. Um, we've talked about it. You guys did a million warm-ups using this particular analysis tool. Remember that the H in hip stands for historical context. This means that you need to sit down and figure out what is happening in the time and place of the document. What are the larger global forces at work? Um, is there a war happening? Is this a period of economic growth, depression? Is this an election year? Those are all different things that are going to influence how we view the document and the document's actual production. The next part is to ask yourself the intended audience of the document. How I write for other historians is very different from how I write an email to your parents or how I text my friends or how I talk about Star Wars on Twitter. The intended audience is going to influence how you discuss things. The first P in hip is about the purpose. What is the purpose of the document being created by the author? What is their motivation? Is the author simply writing an informative, objective text? Are they trying to write a persuasive essay about gun control? Those are all things that you need to be aware of when going through and analyzing any kind of source, is trying to discern what the author's purpose is. The last one is the point of view of the author. Is the author trying to support something? Are they trying to um, negate a particular point of view. Um, you also need to consider where the author is from, their um, age, if you can figure that out, their job. If they work for the government and they are writing an official, official government document, they're probably, chances are, not going to write something critical of the government. If this is um, something that is written by a woman about men, that is going to influence her point of view. Those are all things to consider. Their economic circumstances. So consider all of those factors when analyzing a primary or secondary source. Now, I've thrown around the term primary source a couple of times. And if you guys have forgotten, primary sources are sources that provide firsthand evidence about whatever historical event that we're studying. This can be art legal documents, political cartoons, recordings, you know, like the Nixon tapes, any of those things are primary sources. Um, I definitely stole this um, definition of a primary source from the Ithaca University Library, shout out to them, because uh, I really liked it. But one example of a primary source that we definitely all read um, back in August when everyone was young and fresh and ready to go is the Declaration of Independence, right? That is the document that our founding fathers wrote to break up with Britain. 